Hi everyone, my name is Tim and I'm an engineer on the core development team for Paketo Buildpax. Buildpax transform your application source code into container images and the Paketo project provides production ready Buildpax for the most popular frameworks and languages. One such framework is .NET Core and today I'd like to show you how to set up remote debugging for your .NET Core applications using Paketo Buildpax and Visual Studio Code. Debugging is useful in general, but more and more these days, the program you're trying to debug isn't running in your local environment, it's running maybe in a Docker container or you're debugging over SSH in a remote virtual machine somewhere. So it can be a little more difficult to set that workflow up as compared to say, just your debugging tools in your IDE on your local workstation. Luckily for .NET Core, uh, the folks at Omnisharp provide a C Sharp extension that provides a lot of these tools for debugging, as well as a server side command line tool called VSDBG that we can install in our application image with the build packs. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And everything I'm going to cover today is outlined in our docs at paketo.io slash docs under the how to guides for .NET Core. We have the new environment here in Visual Studio Code with our source code loaded up yeah, and a terminal window uh, inside our source application. Uh, we've also got the docs up here on the right and we're going to use some stuff from here as we go along. So first off, to build the application using the build pack, we're going to need a platform that will invoke the lifecycle stages of the build pack. And for that, I'm going to use pack. So we're going to perform a pack build. And there are a couple important fields here. Uh, this is the application image name. That's the name that the image will have at the end of this build. And we're also going to supply an environment variable. Now, by default, the .NET Core build pack does not configure a .NET application for the debug context, nor does it install VSDBG. We want both of these things. So we're going to have to pass this BP debug enabled environment variable, and we're going to have to set that to true. So now as we kick off our build here, we'll see that VSDBG, the build pack, is included is included in our build it passes detection and that in its build process it installs visual studio debugger generates an sbom entry for the debugger so that there's a, a record of it in our bill of materials and it configures the path so that vsdbg is appended to the path for when we want to invoke it at launch time further down in this build, we'll see that the .NET Publish build pack sets its configuration flag to debug instead of the default, which is release. .NET Publish runs, and we'll see in a second what happens at .NET Execute. So here in .NET Execute, the ASP.NET Core environment environment variable is set to development and all of these three actions in tandem create the perfect environment for our app to run with remote debugging. So we've successfully built our source app. Now we're going to need to set up VS Code itself to uh, support our debug workflow. So we're going to create a launch.json file. And this is where we're going to grab this. You can grab this template here from the how to guide. And we are going to make some changes here. But first, let me explain some of the more important fields here. Process ID specifies the Visual Studio code that we would like a UI element to allow us to pick which remote process we'd like to uh, attach to. This pipe program field specifies which program we're using to set up our remote context. In this case, we're using Docker exec. And the arguments 
two Docker are listed here in pipe args, the most important of which is the container ID, which we'll talk about more in a second. Lastly, there's this debugger path. Now we are invoking VSDBG by name, but in order to do that, we need to do that in the context of CNB lifecycle launcher. And that's because when the build packs run, the lifecycle sets up the program execution context, including the path, which we've added VSDBG to, as you saw earlier. And so in order to invoke VSDBG by name, we need to invoke it through the launcher. Okay, now that that's set up, we'll need to install the C Sharp extension uh, from OmniSharp. And that's going to give us the debugging support and some language tools, development tools for C Sharp. Perfect. So that's all set up. That's installed. And now what we're going to do is we are going to run our container. So I'm just going to go ahead and do a Docker run with source app. And here I'm just publishing the container port 8080 to the corresponding host port so that we'll be able to view it in the browser and so on. Awesome. Now we've got the container ID that we can replace here in our launch JSON. All right, we are almost there. So now what we will want to do is go back to VS code and we want to start debugging. But actually first, let's set a breakpoint. This is the controller for our app. And let's see if we can find somewhere that makes sense to put a breakpoint. To me, this return seems like a decent place. So let's set a breakpoint here and then let's start debugging. Let's maybe open up the debug console just to see what's going on. And we'll start debugging. Now, this is this is can be a little confusing. So the process here that you're selecting is not necessarily the application image name. It is the process name that you're that you're choosing here. So if you can see here in the exporter, this the default process type has been set to source app. That may or may not be different from your application image name. So be aware of that. But we're going to select source app because in our case it's the same. And we get this prompt to open it up in the browser. So let's see what it's looking like. It's looking pretty good to me. Everything looks good. We can click through here, increment this counter. That all looks good. And this fetch data is where we'll hit our breakpoint. So let's go ahead and hit that. And you can see that our breakpoint is now hit. We can pro we can perform the usual debugging workflow steps. We can step over, we can step into, step out of. Uh, we can view our variables here, our local variables. We can add watches here so that we can see how our variables change over time. We can see our call stack and we can view the breakpoints that we've set. There's also this debug console that will tell us if anything has gone wrong and just gives us general information about what's going on with debugging. But all that said, once you can pause or play debugging as well, and once you're done, you can simply disconnect and continue developing as you were. And that's it. That's all you need to know to enable remote debugging on .NET Core applications with Paqueta Build Packs and Visual Studio Code. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Paqueto, then feel free to check out our website at paqueto.io and join our community. <laughs> Reach out to us on Slack, tweet at us, or join our working group meetings. We'd love to hear from you and we'd love to collaborate with you on moving the project forward. Thanks for listening and I hope you enjoy Cloud Foundry Day.